Well, our guest for tonight is Dr. William Pepper. Dr. Pepper has been involved in cases of the assassination of Martin Luther King as well as Robert Kennedy. As a matter of fact, he's trying to get a case for Sirhan Sirhan reopened based on new evidence that's come to light in the last 10 years. Dr. Pepper is with us right now. Dr. Pepper, thank you for coming on and talking to us about these cases. Okay, it's good to be with you. It's always important to follow the story wherever it leads, and you followed this case for the Martin Luther King assassination for about 10 years before you had the retrial. It was actually a, a mock trial. Tell us what the conclusion was of that trial. Well, the, the retrial, um, we, we, brought a, we brought a civil action. Um, I brought a civil action on behalf of the King family against Lloyd Jowers and others who were involved in the assassination of Martin King. Um, the, the trial was an actual trial, civil trial, with a jury and a judge in Memphis, Tennessee. Went on for, um, oh, 30 days. Over 70 witnesses testified. And all of the evidence was laid out as to how Martin was killed and why he was killed. And, and so the King, it, it enabled the King family finally to have closure in mm -hmm. terms of that. That, that situation it took the jury 59 minutes after hearing testimony over 30 days. It took them 59 minutes to come back um, with a, a, a verdict finding Jowers and the defendants. And we had we had named unnamed members of uh, federal, state, and local <laughs> government who were involved. Um, uh, as as being responsible for the killing of Martin King, and and n with no responsibility for James Earl Ray, mm. so and, and a little vindication for for James a year <laughs> after his death. He died mm -hmm. in 1998. Tell us what they who they found were responsible. Uh, I'm sorry, who they found what? Who, who did they believe was responsible for the assassination? Well, of Dr. King? yeah, they, yeah, they believed that, that it was a, a, a wide-ranging conspiracy, and and on the basis of the evidence that came up, that uh, he was killed by a a, a single uh, shot fired by a sniper, uh, who was in the bushes behind the uh, cafe called Jim's Grill, was owned by the principal defendant Lloyd Jowers. Jowers had admitted that uh, he, he played a role in the assassination of Martin King. And um, uh, so there wasn't much, much question about that. Um, there was a military team there, Alpha 184 team there, and, and they were backups. They did not kill Martin King. Martin was killed by a, a, a lone contract gunman who, who uh, got off that shot. Now, if he had not been successful, uh, the military unit was there to... Uh, to make sure that Martin was hit. They were, they were not going to wow. ever let him leave Memphis because he was going to bring half a million people to Washington wow. and, and this, the Poor People's March and campaign. They were not going to march. Or, they were going to stay there mm -hmm. and um, visit their congressmen and senators and press for a return to, uh, for funding for social programs. So they weren't, they, they, the military knew they didn't have the forces to contain a, a mob of that size mm -hmm. if it got out of hand and they were likely to get out of hand because they were likely to be frustrated in their request right so they had to stop king that was that was wow. their logic and and they did well now you you're involved in actually trying to get the case of sirhan sirhan reopened as well and a lot of people believe that they've Seen this on television reports. It's an open and shut case. Sirhan Sirhan walks up to Robert Kennedy and shoots him, but that's not exactly what happened. Tell us what happened <laughs> as far as your evidence goes. No, it's certainly not what happened. Right. Sirhan Sirhan was uh, was set up to be a um, a distraction. He he was he was uh, uh, hypnoprogrammed, and we we had Dan Brown from Harvard come down and spend seventy hours with him. He's a, he's a world-class expert on hypnoprogramming. That's a, that's a means of controlling behavior through the use of chemicals, drugs, as well as hypnotism, not just hypnotizing a person. Mm -hmm. Sirhan was, um, and that's very important uh, for the public. That's very important for the public to understand because most people don't realize that these programs go back to at least the mid '50s. Actually, earlier than that, it was after the result of these programs that uh, Dr. Frank Olson died. He had already been involved in the mid-50s 
and a lot of mind control experiments, that sort of thing. So it goes back probably to the to the 40s at some point in time. Well, there was a there was a lot of concern during the Cold War that the Soviets were getting involved with uh, with mind control and brainwashing, and there, there were uh, there was there was shock um, at the degree of of uh, capability that the North Koreans, in conjunction with the Soviets, had and manifested during the Korean War. So it was. Um, it, it was something that a great deal of effort was put into, and they, de they have developed it as basically as a science, the way I see it, frankly. Mm -hmm. And and Sirhan was a victim of that. He was uh, on, on cue. He had a handler. She was there, a woman in a polka top dress, uh, who, who attached herself to him in the and brought him into the pantry. When she gave him the, the pinch, that was the uh, that was the trigger, like, so to speak. That was the cue. Uh, he jumped down from the table and took a firing position uh, some distance in front of the senator. He thought he was back at the firing range. That was he, what he was told to see, that he was back at the firing range, and he was just supposed to start shooting. What happened was it got off two shots in the front of the senator, and then his arm was pinned to the steam table by a number of people uh, who, who, who jumped on him. So he had no control over his gun after the second shot. Uh, and he pulled, kept pulling the trigger robotically with his hand on the table, and the bullets went all over the pantry. Bob was killed by this, this, this distraction allowed him to be killed by um, a, 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 pro, a pro, a professional assassin, who would who knelt down behind him and put three bullets into two into his coat and body, and one just behind his right ear which killed the brain, and a fourth bullet went through a shoulder pad. They were all powder burn range. They were very close and fired an upward angle. There is no question that uh, Sirhan, who was in front, and we had a dozen witnesses who testified they saw him in front of, of uh, the senator, could never so, have uh, been in a position. To so, to, so to recap, Sirhan is standing in front, firing horizontally, whereas Kennedy is, and he only gets off two shots before they pin his hand down. Yes, Kennedy is yes, killed right. with three shots from the back and a fourth that passes through his jacket right. from the back at an upward angle. Now, how did they how did they convict Sirhan with this evidence? What did they do to get a conviction? <laughs> well, they basically, his, his lawyer threw the case. I mean, uh, Grant Cooper was his lawyer. Cooper was himself under indictment, <clears throat> under a federal in indictment. And so they had all the leverage in the world on uh, on Sirhan's counsel because they had him under indictment. Wow. And and uh, he threw the case. He agreed to the state's ballistic evidence. He never challenged any of it, even though two of the bullets were not actual bullets in evidence. They were fabricated. That's right. Now you allow... you say in your in your uh, movement for retrial, you say there were substitute bullets admitted as evidence in place of real bullets. Tell yes, us a little bit yes, about yes, that. So yeah, we know that's the case because there was a, a commission, the Wenke Commission, that looked at the uh, ballistics evidence in 1973. And at the, at the bottom of um, the inventory page, they received this evidence from the clerk of the court. And the bullets they received from the clerk of the court at the bottom of the, the, uh, the page uh, had um, particular notations that were, that were on, the, on, the, um, uh, on the base of the bullet. And uh, the notations that were on those bullets that they received were different from the notations that were put on the bullets by the doctors who removed them, one from a victim named Goldstein, and the other was the Kennedy neck bullet. And the, so the notations on those bullets that they uh, had at the trial were different. Mm. Then, the, then, the, then the notation that the coroner, the medical examiner, and the hospital doctor put on the actual bullet. So they introduced the wrong bullets. They also did, but they didn't, uh, they, they didn't uh, object to the state's whole case of the uh, ballistics case. They, uh, they claimed they were only there to try to save Sirhan's life mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and avoid the death penalty and all of that, which they didn't do. He was right. given the death penalty, found guilty, given the death penalty. And if it hadn't been found unconstitutional uh, in, in California, he would have been executed, and that would have been the end of that story. Wow. Well, it's important to follow this up, because not only do we not want to see the innocent condemned for crimes of other people, but we really want to know, just as in the case of Martin Luther King, we want to know who's behind these sorts of things. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, the, the 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 roads lead for the most part uh, to agents of the federal government, and these are, these become people who are um, so undesirable in terms of the ruling forces in the society that they have to be eliminated. They don't kill pe everybody. They don't kill all people who are involved in dissenting and dissenting advocacy and work. But they, if a person gets in a position where he is so dangerous, potentially dangerous uh, to them, and they can't control him. This is Jack Kennedy, for example. Jack Kennedy was became un, they call unmanageable. They, there was no way they could control him and get him to do what they wanted him to do, um, which was to uh, obliterate the Soviet Union, uh, heighten the Cold War to a hot war, um, invade Cuba. I mean, you know, the, 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 the whole war mentality uh, Kennedy was... Uh, not going to adopt, and he was also pulling troops out of Vietnam, as you know. He'd given the order for uh, mm -hmm. that in December 19, um, December 1963, troops were start to be removed. He, he was making enemies right and left, and mm -hmm. uh, they couldn't control him. This is why I think people have to be so concerned about what we see happening with these, with the NSA, what they're doing to politicians, e even if you're not. Even if they're going, if they're going to use it as a coup to get somebody out, if they don't uh, kill the person, it's still something that uh, everybody should be concerned about. Even if it's not being used against them directly, if it's being used to change the government subversively, that should be everybody's concern. But you know, you might wind up being the next Sirhan Sirhan. You might wind up being the next Patsy that they decide to blame their assassination on. You never know what's going to happen, especially when they know every detail of your life and. If they've got total data control, they can basically insert information about you that fits their narrative. Yeah, I think all of that is a fear. No yeah, about it. yeah that absolutely. Has to be well, now, there was also, in the Sirhan Sirhan case, there was also some new evidence that came to light in 2004 uh, about the audio. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, there was a tape recording um, uh, that that was made by a young uh, researcher and journalist, and until 2005, uh, there wasn't the, the capability, there was not the capability to do a computer analysis of that tape recording. So um, uh, it, it lay there. But um, Phil von Prague, who was an expert and a specialist in this area, was able to do that, and he analyzed it, and he uh, he showed that there were 13 bullets fired from two different directions and two different guns, and uh, that's it scientifically is conclusive. He said there were 13 bullets fired. Wow. Now, it, it would have been enough if people would have just looked at the ballistic evidence. As you mentioned, the, pro the defender was actually being blackmailed essentially under prosecution for something else and and he didn't really look at the ballistic evidence the fact that only two shots were even fired in Kennedy's direction by Sirhan Sirhan and he was shot with three shots from the back that should have been sufficient but with this new evidence in 2004 showing that there was actually 13 gunshots and of course Sirhan Sirhan's gun only held eight shots it seems like that would be enough for them to open up the case the the fact that there was some prima facie ridiculous aspects about the uh, the initial ballistics as well as this new evidence that came to light with the audio tape. So you filed this movement to get a new trial for Sirhan Sirhan about a year ago. Tell us where this is at this moment. Well, I guess, I guess we, we've been involved um, in making application to the court. Uh, which has gone on for about uh, procedurally for about two years, um, and we um, we're trying to get the, there's a magistrate who advises the judge, and they um, late in the day have changed judges uh, on us, um, and and the magistrate's report uh, that has come out has indicated. Um, that the petition should be um, dismissed. It's not a surprise. I mean, this has been the position of the uh, of the court in the state basically forever on this case. Mm -hmm. uh, they try to keep the case admired in procedural issues rather than dealing with the merits right. Right. and the facts of actual innocence. That's how they prolong these cases forever. Well, so it's that's still the important. situation we're in.
Yeah, it's still important. You've brought this to the public attention, and people are still hearing the evidence, even if it's not going to be formally tried in a court. It's still important that you've pulled this together, you've summarized this for people, and you're you're still getting the story out there. So that that's good. Well, we are we are if if the judge follows the magistrate's recommendation and. If if she, she reads really reads the file and the evidence, she should not, of course. But if she does, then we um, uh, we expect that we will go to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals has ruled that actual innocence uh, must uh, supersede, take take precedence over. Uh, any procedural defects in the case. Uh -huh. So I think um, w the Ninth Circuit is is with us on this. We're in, you know, we're, we're, we think the evidence is so strong that a a, a reasonable uh, a juror could not have found Sirhan guilty. So we we believe we're all right with that. Mm -hmm. The Supreme Court has um, recently. Um, uh, ruled in a case called uh, uh, Perkins and McQuiggan that, in fact, um, actual innocence, uh, if the evidence is, the bar is very high, but if it is strong enough, actual innocence must, uh, must, uh, and, sh and should um, uh, take, take, take any procedural defects out of the way. So, well, I think you have a pretty strong case. You know, I think you have a pretty strong case even if they don't look at the new audio information, which it itself is very strong, the fact that he's firing from the front horizontally and, and only two shots were even fired in that direction by him, and then you've got the fact that he was hit by three shots point blank from the back at an upward angle, that, that's just amazing that that got through the justice system, but we all know how things like that can be gamed. Tell us about another case that you're getting involved in that also dates back to that same time, the case of Mary Meyer. Yeah, uh, Mary Meyer, in, in many ways, is, is is as or more interesting than the assassination cases of the Kennedy brothers and Martin King. Mary Meyer <clears throat> was was um, the only woman Jack Kennedy ever loved. I think that's become now pretty clear. He was going to marry her um, after the uh, second term. He, he, as we told, Kenny O'Donnell and uh, and others close to him knew how close Mary was. Mary. Would uh, spent uh, the, visited the White House 40 times in October of '63 before they killed him. She was a powerful influence over the president in, in the in the uh, cause for peace, and and probably the single most powerful, courageous woman um, that I've encountered during this uh, this whole uh, 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 troubled period of time. Mm -hmm. She. Um, she she was turning the president clearly in the path to peace, and um, and making him what the military called uh, unmanageable. Um, when they killed Jack Kennedy, um, she waited until the Warren Commission report came out. She um, uh, was t devastated by the fact that, of course, it covered up that what really happened. And she went to her ex-husband. She had been married to Cord Meyer, a deputy director of the CIA, mm. and uh, divorced him in '57 because she just couldn't, couldn't it seem, put up any longer with with, uh, with, uh, with living that kind of life. So she left him. Um, uh, Peter Janney has written a book called Mary's Mosaic, and I um, have agreed to represent Peter as his counsel, and I'm working with him um, on a strategy to try to bring all of the evidence that he has uncovered and put in uh, in that in that book uh, before a um, before a court and a jury. You might want to interview Peter. You might want to talk to him and uh, mm -hmm. get him get him on talk to him separately because he can go over the, all of these deals. He was close to Mary Meyer as a child. She was like a surrogate mother. Uh, he was close to that family. And his father, Worcester Janney, was a, a CIA agent. He was a very senior CIA guy. Mm. And, um, and it's devastating for Peter to have learned that his father um, knew about the plot to kill Mary. Wow. In fact, was the first one to call Ben Bradley, the Washington Post, and, uh, and tip Ben, ben off. Ben Bradley was married to Mary's sister.
Mm. So it's um, it's it, it's 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 a saga of, uh, of enormous proportions, and I think uh, it's an unsolved murder. They did uh, accuse a, a a black fellow who happened to be on the in the same wooded area at the time, but there was no evidence, no forensic evidence, and and he didn't meet the description uh, given of uh, someone who was uh, standing over the body. And so the jury acquitted him. So it's, it's, it is a 50-year-old unsolved murder, uh, maybe the most famous unsolved murder in Washington D.C. history. Yeah, and, the description um, of the the description of the murder, the murder by eyewitnesses and the physical uh, appearance yeah. of this black man had absolutely nothing to do with each other, right? Absolutely right. I mean, it wasn't it was, even close. It was, it, was, it was a farce, and they but they tried. And, but however. Um, we have identified, uh, Peter has identified, and others who worked on this case identified an individual who was a CIA operative who was there on the scene. And um, um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting legal challenge as to how to, uh, how to get this matter before a judge and jury, but that's what we're working on. Absolutely. Well, I certainly wish you luck on that, and I, we really appreciate, all of us appreciate, the work that you've done to try to discover the truth. You know, it, it sometimes takes a very long time for the truth to come out, but it eventually does. People have uh, guilty consciences about what they've done at earlier times. Maybe they were intimidated at the time, as we're seeing with the flight TWA 800. We have six whistleblowers that have now come forward now that they've retired. Maybe they're not as concerned about their careers. Maybe they've had a long time to think about this. and. They want the truth to come out. So we, we see that type of thing happening over and over again with the Oklahoma City bombing, with flight TWA 800, and with the Martin Luther King assassination. And it takes people like you who are willing to go against the grain, go against the conventional wisdom, and really have a lot of verbal rocks thrown at them for going up and, and pointing out that the emperor's story doesn't really have any clothes to it. I think that's right, but uh, anyway, we do what we can do, and maybe maybe it'll bear fruit some yes. someday, and maybe it'll 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 help to alert the citizens of this republic so that they can come out of their somnambulance, come out of their ignorance. You know, uh, <laughs> ignorance is fertile breeding ground yes. for tyranny, as you know. Absolutely, and that's the that's the lesson to take away from this. I mean, these are things that happened 50, 60 years ago, whatever. It still has relevance for today. Because if we don't stop the corruption and if we don't have transparency and openness and honesty in government, it's really kind of eating away at this country like a cancer. And we're seeing the fruits that were sown back in the 60s with these secret assassinations. We're seeing those fruits sown out today with open drone assassinations and the Department of Homeland Security openly plotting to carry out operations on the American public by massive amounts of ammunition, holding massive drills in cities at an increasing frequency and getting rid of the posse comitatus law. We see all of this stuff coming back as a threat to us because we never dealt with the assassinations and the criminal actions as they were happening back in the 60s. I think that's right. Well, thank you very okay, much for joining us. I really appreciate you talking to us. Thank you, Dr. Pepper. You're welcome. Well, when we tolerate corruption, it only gets worse. And when we tolerate and allow the assassinations that happened in the 60s, when we allow them to cover that up, when we allow them to destroy evidence, as Dr. Pepper has pointed out in the Robert Kennedy case, they only get emboldened to do it again and again. Part of that case, as he was talking about, was the idea that Sirhan Sirhan did not know where he was. He thought he was at a shooting range and said that he had been controlled, actually he had testimony from an expert psychologist who spent a great deal of time with Sirhan Sirhan to ascertain that he was in fact telling the truth about that. But that's a, the hardest part of the Sirhan Sirhan story for the public to believe because so many people in the public just don't want to believe that our government has been pursuing a scientific program that allows them to do mind control and they've been pursuing that for 60, 70 years. We have a documentary that InfoWars is going to be carrying exclusively at InfoWarsStore.com. You can pre-book that now. We're going to have a 90-day window where it is exclusively sold by InfoWars. It's going to ship in about a month. And if you're one of the first people to order this while supplies last, you will also get a copy of The American Dream. And it'll show how 
not just minds are being controlled by the government, but our money supply is. The American Dream is a animated cartoon that lays out in a very quick and animated fashion how the Federal Reserve controls the money supply and how they put this all together. So it's a great way for people to wake up. It's a great product. And it goes along with the state of mind for a limited time. When you pre-book this, you'll get a free copy of American Dream. Well, that's it for tonight's news. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show.